Hey guys, how's it going? It's Leon here. Today, I'm going to talk about introvert sensing in the INFP. So I've been doing this series on all eight of the cognitive functions when it comes to the INFP. Using this website, World Sociology Society has a very rich and nuanced description of all eight of the cognitive functions when it comes to the 16 personality types. So we're going to talk about introvert sensing. We're going to look at that description for this function, and I'm going to talk about how I relate to it. So in Sosniak's introvert sensing is called senses here. It says right here that um, the delicacy of INFPs can result in a certain amount of hypersensitivity in their environment, in their surroundings with slight changes to in the environment, easily throwing them off center. And this results in a strong desire of inner peace to maintain peace and stability in your lives. So reading this, um, I do regard myself as a highly sensitive person, and I'm not sure if that's related to type or not. And I think when I observe INFPs and also INTPs, we're a bit sensitive to our external environment. It's like it's almost as if we kind of go about it really timidly in a way with uncertainty. And this has to do with expert sensing. So expert sensing is our polar function, is our weakest function, is our blind spot. And so we always need to kind of re retreat in into introvert sensing away from the external expert sensing kind of environment to maintain this sense of inner peace and stability. We could easily get overwhelmed by um, the outside world. When I read this, it reminds me of the on a piece stereotype that we're crybabies. So kind of like impression that because we're crybabies, we're, we're, we're uh, crybabies, we're very dramatic, right? Uh, and uh, but the thing is, um, when people meet us, we don't actually really appear that way. We actually appear to be very phlegmatic and very calm, right? Maybe we they could subtly sense a sensitivity, right? But the introvert feeling, introvert feeling is an in, internal function, it's introverted function. And so, uh, yes, there is like a drama, but it's all contained within. It's not like it's outward, like, ah, kind of stereotype. That it, That's not like, if you observe INFPs, we don't look like that at all. Um, we can't come off as really calm and non-obtrusive on the outside, very steady, right? So this is something to talk about when it comes to the tertiary function of the different personality types is that it tends to be pushed forward. So even though it's a weak function, it's, it's kind of pushed forward. We really have a strong um, impression of it because it goes in the opposite direction as our polar function. The polar function is very weak. So the third function is emphasized. Extra sensing completely almost like not there. So introvert sensing is very, sh uh, very much shows, right? So INFPs often, they don't, we don't really have a very showy presence in any sort of way. We can almost be like furniture, right? We kind of like appear almost like a backdrop, very calm, very tranquil. And, and uh, we seek surroundings and relationships with others, relaxing and anodyne, preferring quaint, quite quaint backgrounds. It doesn't mean that we won't enjoy a good time at the club, but I guess this is generally true. I think anodyne is such the perfect word. I think when you look at INFPs interact with others, we kind of do our best to keep it very peaceful. Not sure if this is having to do with Enneagram though, because maybe there's um, Enneagram one types that do some things different, but in general, like I think even with the Enneagram one, there's, there's always this anodyne aspect. Like we, we're not like a type that makes waves in any sort of way. There's complete lack of expert sensing. It doesn't mean that we can't be rebellious. I think if we're rebellious, we're often quietly rebellious types. But on the outside, like I want you to look at functions as something that's immediately palpable and tangible. So the functions that you express are expressed in real time, right? It's not talking about what your overall philosophy is. So you maybe overall philosophy is rebellious or contrarian. I think a lot of NP types 
are like this, right? But I think ENTPs would be an example that are more forthrightly rebellious. They have a role function extra sensing, so their extra sensing is actually higher up. Ours is low, so even if we may be rebellious, um, it's all quiet, and we don't make waves. So we, this actually comes from not only polar extrovert sensing being very weak, but we actually secretly have a strong introvert intuition function. We're actually very cautious people, and we kind of go things, go into things with foresight, wanting to prevent uh, conflict from ever happening in the first place. So we don't make waves. That's the impression I get of INFPs. I see INFPs in groups. Uh, we're not the ones making the waves, uh, and that maybe that what leads to quiet, quaint backgrounds. We don't like uh, ruffles feathered or disruptions or causing that to other people in any sort of way. And in reducing their surroundings to the pleasant and painless, INFPs feel they have some hold on the present reality and keep the harsher forces. And pressures at bay, and our interest sensing, as I said, it gets pushed forward, right? So it gets a strong impression to others that almost as if we are introvert sensing types, where these very calm, very ordinary people, right? But really, this comes from the fact that interest sensing is actually kind of weak. So with the weaker functions, the different personality types try to tend to want to hold on to them, right? Because it, they're really delicate. So it's because our introvert sensing is like very delicate that we're, we're doing whatever we can to um, keep, keep a hold on the very little introvert sensing that we do have already so that we don't get swept up by the harsher forces. Similarly, INPs are often attracted to environments of picturesque beauty and seek out tranquil environments for work and leisure. I don't know who doesn't though. Like, who doesn't want to live in a picturesque place? Hmm. I'm I'm kind of curious here. I mean, I I do like New York City in a sense. I like the a bit of busyness. I think maybe that has to do with more personal taste because I talk with different types, and they all have different tastes about where they want to live. And I definitely talk with extra sensing types. They prefer more more like beach environments or. Uh, I know like an ESFP who wants to go live in Connecticut. <laughs> I would never go live in Connecticut. It's too boring for me. So maybe this is a bit extrapolating too much because I think INPs, we do go around in a tranquil, a quiet kind of way, but I think it's kind of extrapolating too much about like maybe where we prefer to live because I think that has to do with more personal tastes. Um, INPs may take personal pride in the performance of a task requiring attention to fine detail and working with their hands, especially if it has special meaning to them, that, that's where the intuition comes in, allowing opportunity for us to attain high quality in our work. I get a lot of uh, compliments regarding this. Like there's certain areas where I do have fine attention to detail, like um, there's some past instances with origami or like when I play my guitar and I get, I could get kind of obsessive with it. I think <laughs> this side, I don't know if this applies to other INPs, but I have like a bit of an obsessive compulsive side with the fine detail when it comes to these art projects that I have kind of, and I kind of miss the bigger picture when I, when it, I kind of get caught up in a lot of these details working, um, on a minute to I. Minutia, that's what I mean. Such activities, idealistic perfection is so common oh, uh, to the INFP, they can find cathartic release. I do find cathartic release to, through such activities, but I think a lot of people do, you know, with music or when they're working on crafts, maybe us in particular, because that's our ter tertiary function. Um, and I, I also, I think there's a flip side to it where I get kind of like really obsessed with details. So I don't know if that's like a cathartic release or not, but I think it's generally true that on the piece, we could be really idealistic. So our, our, our ideas are kind of like up here. It's nice to kind of ground us, have, have introvert sensing to kind of ground us in some sort of way. Furthermore, we could become quite health conscious and fussy about close friends and relationships not looking after themselves properly. 
taking it upon them, themselves to provide for them. I think, you know, when things really matter to us, um, that's when the tertiary and, and inferior functions start to show up, like it, they start to become stronger. So if there's like a project that we really care about, somehow we have the SI and TE for it, right? We could start to organize goals. We could get into the details. But a lot of things we're not like very into, like we're not even noticing details. So I think like that really old description from personality page where it says, uh, we won't notice like the mess on the carpet, but then we'll notice like this speck of dust on our, our personal project binder, right? That, that's, that's where this kind of comes in a bit. So with uh, close friends and relations, I think I do kind of, kind of find that, tertiary intuit sensing starting to pop up all of a sudden where I, I could very much care and concern myself with people's um, health and relations. For the sake of feelings, we need stability, do our best not to allow disharmony. That's basically what they kind of said before. Same thing, they lack an instinct for their own survival and may end up unknowingly walking into danger despite their attempts to everything to be safe and secure. And I said like, yeah, we, we do a, a very much appreciate safety and security, but we're not very good at assessing it. Our sense of introvert sensing is kind of off. So I see like a lot of INPs, they want to be like super prepared for things. So like, uh, like I see a lot of INPs, like if there's a chance of rain, then we kind of bring our umbrella, but it's always like on a day where it's not actually raining. So when I see like a group of people and only me and the other INFP brings the umbrella or brings their poncho because we kind of over prepared or we kind of bring like a backpack that's like full of stuff that we think that we might need. I think there's like this introvert sensing over preparation, but then uh, we don't actually, the, the situation doesn't warrant for it. But then there's other times where it does warrant for it and we forget to bring the stuff. So yes, I could definitely see that. I'm going to wonder, like, I wonder if there's anything else I want to see about uh, INPs, we're not someone, I said this before, I think that we're not someone who makes waves where we're sensitive to, we don't want to have like bad relations with others. So we want to keep things very, very peaceful. That's why it's really to introvert feeling. Uh, we kind of like very, are very conflict avoidant. We could appear very ordinary, even though we're, we have that eccentric side from extrovert intuition, right? But because the introvert sensing is very emphasized, we could appear like the um, ordinary, like, boy next door, for example, or girl next door. I think the other aspect of introvert sensing is like we could be rather prone to laziness too, um, as well. We want to do things at our own pace. So this is against, so when you meet expert sensors, they're kind of like very go, go, go kind of people. We don't have that kind of push through quality. We kind of rather do things very unrushed at our own pace. So I think to other people, we could even appear rather slow. As I said, I mentioned the word phlegmatic before. Slow and phlegmatic, but rather steady, right? But our own internal experience is different. Like we don't feel like uh, steadiness is not necessarily there, but on the outside, very much appear that very much appears to be the case because our expert sensing is very low. Let's see. Um, I think we get into the introvert feeling, introvert sensing kind of loop. And when we get stuck there, um, it's kind of like a way that we kind of rest. It's good to have that space where we could just kind of retreat back to and go into that introvert feeling, introvert sensing place before we kind of go out into the expert world through expert intuition, right? But when we get stuck in that introvert feeling, introvert sensing place too long, then it starts to feel very suffocating. I think what's interesting about introvert feeling and introvert sensing as functions is that they're very actually non-verbal kind of functions. There's, there's not readily about any sort of content. So if we look at like introvert thinking, introvert intuition, extrovert intuition, uh, they're usually about some sort of content. But introvert feeling, introvert sensing is not. It's more like feelings and sensations. They're, it's very raw. Um, there's nothing verbal about it. So we like that kind of experience. It's non-verbal experiential thing that's going on that we, that gives us a sense of peace, but then we kind of get caught too caught up in it. And um, it's good to kind of reach into our extra functions. Is, if there's anything else, I think that's it. I think that's, I guess it's going to be a lot shorter than, than I thought. So that's what I have for introvert sensing. I'm going to keep talking about the other functions in another video or so.